Hope TV continues in Indonesia. The steps of God are what the Balinese call their elaborate network of rice terraces. They are a picturesque and bountiful testament to a people's resourcefulness and their devotion to the water priests entrusted with Bali's water. But it took a California professor and his personal computer to save the timeless system from being dismantled by technocrats and the water priests dismissed as religious quacks. To the Balinese, water is their lifeblood. It helps them grow their rice, purify their souls, and keep their lives in perfect harmony with their environment. It's called Agama Tatra, the religion of the holy water, and it is a complex mix of religious ritual and water management that has made Bali one of the most spiritual and productive places on the planet. But it wasn't until some foreign experts came here to try to change their 2,000-year-old pattern of planting and irrigation that the Balinese and the rest of the world finally discovered how well their system works. Lake Batur, high in the mountains in the center of Bali, is more than the island's main reservoir. This is where the goddess of the lake lives, who blesses the Balinese with all the water they seem to need. In the water temple above the lake, lives Jiro Gade, Bali's head water priest. It's his job to make sure the gods fill the lake so he can distribute the water equitably to the thousands of rice farmers downstream. It sounds like a nice legend and fairy tale, but it's an even better story because it really works. At age 11, Jiro Gade was chosen to be Bali's next head water priest when a virgin priestess saw him in a vision. Admittedly, he knew very little about the religious or water management techniques his predecessors had refined since the 8th century. Recently, some foreign experts thought they could improve Bali's water system and productivity by building modern dams and implementing new rice planting techniques. Many of the traditional water systems and procedures were replaced. The water priests were not consulted until the rice crops started to fail. New fertilizers started fouling the water and insects began to plague the land for the first time. He might be a high priest, but Jiroga Day certainly isn't living with his head in the clouds. I found him to be very much in touch with the modern world. He knew what was needed to save his timeless system, scientific proof that it worked better than anything else. Confirmation came from a faraway source, a computer model developed at the University of Southern California. Anthropologist Steve Lansing used historical data of Bali's rainfall and rice output to support Jiro Gade's water management instincts and confirm the effectiveness of the water priest system. When I began this study, there was a lot of question about whether the traditional system that the Balinese was, were using was basically religious mumbo jumbo, or was it, did it have a scientific foundation? Steve Lansing lived in Bali for several years and is well versed in the culture and the language. He returned with a computer and a working model of the Balinese water system using icons that could simply speak the water priest language. He hoped the computer could help convert the skeptics while helping the water priests improve on their system. We wanted to test whether it was possible for the temple priests and the village people to enter data directly into the computer and to look at the graphics and see if they could make sense of the computer as a way of understanding their problems, allocating water, setting cropping patterns, and organizing irrigation. Yeah. We need something to roll the mouse on. The question that we began with was, do the temples really manage the terrace ecology? We know that the temples claim to manage the ecology, but was there a real scientific basis? So it was designed to calculate the effects of temple management. And the scientific answer to that question is yes. There were a lot of people, especially computer scientists, who thought that it wouldn't work. People who said that this thing is going to crash and burn, that there's no way that primitive rice farmers are ever going to be able to handle anything like an advanced computer system. Well, 
uh, I wish they could be here really to see the, the ways in which the Balinese have taken this up. The Balinese terraced their island to maximize the use of their land and their water. By alternately planting and harvesting their fields, the farmers can recycle the water from paddy to paddy. It's all done according to a precise schedule worked out by the farmers with their local water priests. One of the main reasons it works is that everyone on the island has had a hand in building and maintaining the water system. They follow the water priest's instructions religiously to keep both the rice cycle and their lives in harmony with nature and their gods. Even the local ducks have a precise role in the process. They are trained to move from field to field as the ultimate in organic pest control and fertilizing. The farmers keep their ducks in a row almost by remote control, simply by moving their control flags along the paddy dikes. What's unique about rice paddies is that you need very special, very precise control of the water supply in order for the system to work. For most crops like wheat or corn, all you need to do is get water to the roots of the plant and then the, the crop will grow. But a rice paddy is basically an aquarium. It's a little artificial ecosystem and it's what goes on inside that little rice pond that enables the rice to grow. That's why fields like these have been productive for centuries. In some cases we have records that show that some of these rice paddies have been in continuous production for something like a thousand years. Rice is the single most important food crop grown on this planet. The name the Balinese use for rice is, is murta, which means deathless. So to ask for rice is to mimas murta, or to, to ask really for life. If you listen here in the rice fields, you can hear lots of different sounds. Balinese say that just as human beings can't live without music, so also the rice needs music. Balinese use all kinds of complicated devices for irrigation. There are aqueducts and tunnels and canals, but they're all based upon a single principle, which is equality. All of these little dividers and canals, the complicated patterns that you see, are there so, to, so as to make sure that every farmer gets his own equal share of water. And they say that you cut the rice gently only at the top so that you don't startle the rice, so that the rice soul, the rice mother who lives in the rice, isn't frightened by the transition from life to death. The first cuttings of each rice crop are shaped into the image of the rice goddess to acknowledge the soul of the rice. They don't grow rice in Denpasar, the capital of Bali, but this is where many of the government's water management decisions are made. Steve Lansing has been careful to include the government officials in his research and findings. Like the water priests, they are fascinated by the prospects of using the computer model in their work. But their recent experiences have made them wary of trying to implement modern techniques with the ancient ways of the people. Gerald Gaudet is still the one the Balinese turn to with their water problems, like this dispute over a local water temple's use of a new irrigation system. Subak consists of an area of land that's watered by a canal of water. So this temple controls the irrigation for about 25 hectares of rice lands around here. And over here we can see the water supply for these 25 hectares of rice. This is one subak. There are about 500 subaks that belong to the master water temple of Ulundanabatur. As Lake Batur's high priest, Jirogade must give his blessings to any water project on the island, like the new water tunnel he wanted to show Steve Lansing. The water temple priests are going down to look at a new irrigation system, and I think it's going to be the largest irrigation system built by farmers that I've ever seen. But they found a new spring, and they think that with the water from that spring, they can irrigate 150 hectares of new rice lands. But in order to do that, they have to dig an irrigation tunnel two and a half kilometers through the solid rock. I started building that irrigation tunnel about a year ago, and it already extends about a kilometer through the rock. 
when the tunnel is finished, they'll build a big dam down there, which will raise the level of the water here high enough so the water will flow into that tunnel and go down a couple of kilometers until it reaches the rice fields. The water tunnels and aqueducts run through the mountains and over valleys. They allow the Jiroga Day to allocate the water wherever it is needed, as precisely as any plumbing system. They have built these tunnels through great personal sacrifices and risks. Every 210 days, the Balinese go to their village temple, bearing gifts to reaffirm their faith in their gods. All life on Bali revolves around religion, and the religion revolves around the life cycle of the rice. They worship the same trinity of Hindu gods as the Indian Hindus, along with the native spirits of their rice and water gods and goddesses. Key to every ceremony is the holy water that comes from the Jirogade's temple at Lake Batur. Blessed and distributed by the local water priest, it begins the life cycle of the rice and purifies the souls of the farmers. According to the Balinese, the life cycle for humans doesn't end with death. It is simply put on hold, sometimes several months, until the villagers can mount one of their elaborate cremation ceremonies. The ashes are taken down to the ocean where they are spread on the sea to evaporate with the water up into the heavens where the water cycle begins all over again. Yeah, good day. Since um, uh, it will rain, is it going to, to rain today? Yeah, Mungkin. <laughs> Jiroga Day prays for rain, but doesn't profess to have any better idea of when or how much is coming than the rest of us mortals. Like his authority, the success of the Balinese water system relies largely on faith faith that has been restored by a Californian anthropologist and his computer model, and the continuing model of productivity the Balinese have created for the world with their steps of God. Coming up, the exploits of the environmental crusaders of Greenpeace, when Globe continues. Globe TV continues in the Pacific Ocean.